All right, Chelsea. Chelsea, uh, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? Virginia. What part of Virginia? Pocahontas, Virginia. Pocahontas. Oh, I've been there. I just came back from there. There's less than 500 people. That was incredible. Yeah, we just drove through there. I could do a whole story just on that town. Yeah. It's a ghost town now. Pretty much. So it was, what was the, uh, it, it was coal? Was your industry at one time? Yes. Because there's a downtown, there's a whole, it's like an entire small town with the, with the grocery store and the, all the buildings and everything, and it's deserted. Mm -hmm. There's not a single business there. The so, post office and the bank. So the coal, coal industry left and the town is... It's just residents now. Yeah, and nobody works. How long ago did you leave? I left 2012. What was going on in 2012? My mom passed away. Oh, I'm sorry. She, uh, she had cancer. She passed away at 43. I'm sorry. It's hard. I just lost my mom, too. So you uh, tell me about your childhood. You had both your parents when you were a kid? My dad was in and out a lot. My mom, she was always there. Like, my mom was my best friend. And you had, you had siblings? I had three sisters and a brother. The childhood was good? I was raped from the age of 8 to 16 by my dad's dad. Your grandfather? Did you ever tell anybody? It, not until I was 16. I had had my first kid. He had colic bad. And I was up for three days with him and I thought, if somebody had done this to him, I'd kill him. And I finally said something. So who is the father of your child? Not my grandfather. Not your grandfather? No. And you, uh, did, did, did anything happen to your grandfather after that? He did four years in prison. I was like, that's nowhere near what he, what he done to me. Right. It just seems unfair, but. So you, uh, where'd your life go after, after that all happened? You had a child? How many children do you have now? I have three. I have three boys. Well, when my mom died, I was going through a custody battle with my kids. And uh, my youngest two's dad was getting high I was always around it, but I wouldn't do it. But the day my mom died, I did. I quit going to court for my kids. My whole life was to make my mom happy. When she died, I didn't care anymore. So I left home, I went to Denver for a year and then I went back home for like two or three. See my sister. And then this last time I left, I went back to Denver. And I've been in California going on three years now. So you went to Colorado and you left the, your, your children behind? My sister. My sister's mother-in-law got custody of them. The drugs were in your life at that point for the whole period? Yeah. What's your drug? Then it was crack. And then I switched to crystal. But I haven't, the crack was my, my drug of choice. Like it took everything.
You stay in touch with your kids? As much as my sister will let me. And then how were you supporting yourself when you were in, in Colorado? Uh, I had a job for a little bit at a hotel for prostitution. I haven't, my kids' dad, he would do his little thing to make money, but when me and him split up, I just had a couple of pimps I worked for. And then when I got here, I met this guy named Trey. He actually kept me from killing myself. Do you get depressed a lot? What's the hardest part for you in being separated from your kids? That my mom. And your mom. Yeah. Like I'm the oldest out of, of my siblings. And all my other siblings took it hard, but not as hard as I did. Like, my youngest sister started going to church. And I completely went in the opposite direction. The sexual abuse you had when you were young, was that something your sisters went through too? One of my sisters, the one that's like two years younger than me, but she told the same day it happened and he uh, he had to be he got put on probation or it was like nothing and uh the way my family treated her I was like I can't say anything what did they how did they treat her like my dad and the, he was like, you're a liar. You're just doing it for money. Like we didn't get any money to tell what really happened. Like they, they said some really hurtful things about her. So that made it difficult for you to come out. And when I finally did, that's the first person I told was her. Cause it was, I was like, I'm sorry that I didn't stick up for you. And now we don't even talk. And the drug use helps you deal with it all, right? Not necessarily deal with it, but not, not think about it as not, much. Not deal with it, yeah. Because whenever you come down, it's like, it's 10 times more than what it would have been if you would have just dealt with it. So then, then you came to LA at one point. How long have you been here? Going on three years. And you've been staying on Skid Row? Do you have a tent? No. I finally got an SRO. Oh, that's nice. But you were you were on the street for a while? Yeah. Uh I was in between like with this guy I had met and uh, on the streets. It's hard for me on the streets. 
like people think I'm just a pushover, I guess, and they try to take advantage of me. I've been robbed. I don't think I would be able to get by if it really wasn't for the animals that I've got. Like, they keep me busy. Do you have any friends in your life now? A couple, but not someone that I talk to regular, regularly. Just like if I see them pass by or whatever. I'll talk to them. But not real friends. Do you have anyone that you trust? No. Are you, are you here mainly just because that's where the drugs are easy to find? No. Like, my favorite place is the beach. And like, I like the point that it's just like a 45 minute train ride and I'm there. Like that's my, like I go, when I go to the beach, it's like nothing else matters. But it took me a minute to fuck, to get back to, even anywhere close to where I used to be. Like it just feels good to have my own spot. So your your kids and your family are still back in uh, Pocahontas? And going back there is not a... I mean, kids are there, but nothing else is there, right? Like the nursing home my mom was in was at the end of my street. Where would, you like, where would you like to see your life go from here? I just started school again. I'm hoping to start on some college classes. I eventually want my kids to come out right here. Have you been clean before? Do you have? I got clean for like two, two years. Was it difficult? It was easier than I thought it would be, but like I quit. No rehab, nothing. But one day I was like, it was Mother's Day. And I was like, and I gave it all up again. It's been eight years since I lost my mom and I still haven't grieved over her. My ex would tell me, it's done, it's, it's over with, get over it. How do you get over it? Yeah, you lost a lot. You lost your mom, you lost your kids, your, your town is even gone. Yeah. 
I've lost my stepmom since I've been out here. But you're still hopeful a little bit, right? That's great. I try to be. I mean, just taking classes is a big deal. It's a lot of work. It's like I can't remember anything I learned when I was in school. What would you like to do with your life? I don't know if I want to work with animals or something where I'm pretty much like by myself, like some type of office job or I don't even know completely. Do you talk with your sisters? One of them. The baby. She's 20. But I feel like our relationship is slowly drifting away. How old are you? 29. <sighs> 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 Can you imagine going back to Virginia, to Pocahontas, or would you bring your kids out here? I don't want to bring them out here. Like, there's nothing there anymore. Yeah. But I know the first thing I gotta do is get clean. Yep. Cause there's no way I want my kids to see me. What do you think would help you get clean? Have you tried rehab? No. No. I've said I was going to do it a couple of times, but I always had an excuse why I didn't. I think it might be time. 